Well, hello, this is a note, a short note, an introduction to setting up the video display of Grib files. We have a video on how to load Grib files, and so I'm not going into that. I'm going to remind her here that I do Command I. Now that would be on a PC, Control I, and that's just a reminder of what files you have loaded. So I have three loaded, one in each Grib slot. And the first one is a GFS of uh, wind and pressure and waves and so forth. And slot two, I've got the wind from the high resolution rapid refresh model, which is a high resolution data. There, this is this has got a data point every 1.5 miles, and the GFS is every 15 miles, so it's 10 times better detail. And then here's the ocean currents. Uh, the ocean currents from what Artoff's model. And we want to look at just samples of different different things you ways you set up the display. Right now we don't see anything because this globe up here has got it shut off. And what is this actually we're looking at? We're looking at slot three, which was the ocean current. Let's look at slot one. That's the way that's the ocean, that's the GFS winds. Remember you got it also written up here. Slot one GFS, slot two her, slot three Artoffs. So that's a reminder. And so let's look at the uh, optional ways that we can set these things up. And the controls are done by mainly this this grib slot, this guy here is the uh, grib configuration, the main tool on this. This shows you what slot you're in, which is one, two, and three. This just shut things on or off. And this is a clock for setting the time of the grib you're looking at. And so uh, let's come back to that in a minute. All right, so let's just turn this on and see what the options are. Display. This just, this again here is just, watch this little arrow here. That's just changing which, which grib you're looking at. All slots, all three. Number one is a GFS, so forth. Display grip time slider. Ah, that's this here. You see I turn it on, it goes off. That's one way to show the time, the time, and in a vary the time of the data. Right, like that. Whoop, oh, look, it went away. Ah, a very good point to bring up here. We've got three grip files loaded. And these grip files, even though we ask, I or you don't know that, but I ask for them all at the same time. So I have the latest edition of each of these three grip files, but they're computed at different times. So they start at different times and they end at different times. So this slider is going to reflect that. Let's just look at G, okay, I'm a number one, that's GFS. So where does that go? It actually, the first GFS looks like it's about right here. Now, actually, that's the most recent. These others are going back in time because one model was calculated yesterday or something. But anyway, so the grid, this is GFS data from starting here somewhere, going all the way up to the end, which is however many days we ask for. Now the next I go to, what's that? That's the HER data. And the HER data, that started here, which was, it's updated every hour, right? Every hour. And it's updated here, and it only goes up to 18 hours on it only goes up to here. So you see, so don't be surprised when you move the slider along that things change. Here, what do I got here? Oh, look at that. That's the, what is this? Ocean currents. Okay, down here, look at these arrows. This is, this is slot one, slot, oh, wait, let me get this up here where you can see it. These are the main arrows, slot one, slot two, slot three, that's the wind. Now we're in the current slot one slot, that's slot three. So, and that's what we're looking at, black. Let me just change those currents to yellow. Okay, so then we can see them a little bit better. Okay, that's good. Now when I move this, you see that goes all the way back because that computer, that model ran this time, this early time. And that's why I got the first one. And it'll probably run out here. No, it goes all the way across goes all the way across, but there's probably only two computations. Anyway, that's the point I want to make here, is it the, with the slider, if you don't see your wind, if you know the wind's there, you've checked here, it's not shut off, and it's not there, and you still don't see it, then move that slider around or check the times you're looking at, so it's really there. So that's one way to set the time. That's what this is. The other way to set the time is just go up here to the clock, and then you can 
put this drop down here, and these are the actual computation times, and this is when you've got a bunch loaded like we have now, it's gonna be weird a little bit. This is every three hours, and somewhere along it's gonna be every one hour, and then it may bounce up, then it's every three hours again. So that's, uh, but you, these are the selected grip, these are the actual computation times. You can choose any one of those, or you can go in here and pick a date and type in the exact time you want. Like I want, for some reason, let's say I have a ASCAT pass and I'm trying to compare my forecast, my model forecast with a satellite that went by and measured wind at uh, 1350 06, right? Something like that. And I say, okay, then sure enough, well, this doesn't show the seconds, but it takes it right to the minute and so forth. All right, that's how you set the times. Uh, superimpose slots from all times. Now, arrows from all times. That would be of interest here in a case like, let's look at one and two. One and two. Wait a minute, just one? Okay, all, well, I'll look at all three. I've got the arrow, I've got the current in there, but the current I'm not caring about too much right now. But can I shut the current off? None. Yeah, okay. I just shut the current arrows off. Okay, but now I'm looking here at this at this data and I'm comparing. I've got see uh, superimposed arrows from all slots and I've got one and well I've got them all on and I've shut off the current uh, arrows from the waves. I've shut I mean arrows from the currents. But now I can compare here. Oh, now I maybe want that slider uh, make it a little bit easier for the moment. And then you can look at this area and then you can see how these models may differ. You might have to zoom in a little bit here. And then also arrows on grid points. Let me look at that first. That's a truth meter. Arrows on grid points is a truth meter because otherwise the system is doing a very nice interpolation and you can control the size of the arrows or the density, the size of the arrows. You can control the density of the arrows like that. Right? But when you turn on the truth meter, then you're only getting data points at where there are real data points. So you see out in the ocean here, these things are, uh, if, you, if I zoomed all the way out, I'd see it's 10 to 1. But, uh, well, let's see, wait a minute, 1.5, not exactly 10 to 1. But these are, these white points are where the GFS global models telling us the winds data and the red are w where real data points are from the HER model. So if you want to sneak up in here and start looking at wind in this area, you don't, look at that. I'm looking at this whole area here and I can do navigation and routing with this wind, but there's not even a GFS point in there. So the way that you would typically do this in that when you're doing a numerical routing or something at a start of a race or cruise or something going out in the ocean, then what you would do is load the HER data, the very fine resolution data, and load the GFS data. And the program, this computer program, is smart enough that it'll start out using the highest resolution one until you run out of that data, and then it'll just automatically switch over to the GFS, all done sort of automatically for you. But anyway, this is a way you can compare uh, how, how the differences between a global model and a, and, and a, and a regional model. Okay, arrows on grib points, gribs, arrows and density, grib over charts, okay. Let me turn on, that just means that if I have a chart here and I'm looking at, oh, okay, so that's red. Let me just see, what wind am I looking at here? I'm at, the, oh, uh, oh, I'm looking at all of them. Oh, the white I can't even see. Let me go in here and make it blue or something, okay. So now, then all this means here is you can either make them not see just a chart or you come in and see very strong winds uh, over a chart. That's what that is. Okay, we're not using charts. Now, very often when you're doing your weather work, it, uh, charts may get in the way more than anything else, but depends. Background. Okay, now let's look at just say the GFS wind and let's look at the background is the map you put in the back that's, so this is now what I've got here is, I've turned on the background, a background is a wind map, and that's just showing the uh, contours of wind, of a, this is stronger wind, that's a very light wind, and you can do it either with 
these f smooth colors like that, or you can turn on a gradient and have a look. You can think of that as prettier if you like, or you may like this as more quantitative of knowing you see, when I turn a map on, here's an important point, when I turn a map on, then the bottom shows, then this, and this down here in the status bar is where I read what's there. So you see this wind is, uh, this looks like it's, this line is 30 knots, right? You see it's 29.9, a little bit of that. Then I come down to this one. This is like 27, this is like, Oh, that looks like it's like something like 27 knots. Well, let me come to the green one here. Here's yellow. That's 18, 18, 18. This is 17. Oh, they're unusual. It's This looks like it's changing at 18 knots. Well, anyway, it's a grid like that. And then you can make it a, a where is that uh, color uh, gradients? Smoother. Depends on what you like. Okay, so that is that for that background. And then the main, you can change that if I wanted to look at the currents, for example. Now, I've not got the currents. Let's see, wind map. Let me make that currents. Okay, so you see here I've got the currents. I've got, what do I got going? I've got blue. I've got the arrows for the currents are blue. Let me see if I make those, let's see, let's see what, now I see that would be over here. Let me just change that to white just to see, show how that works. See, that's white. And then that's the, uh, now we're looking at a background. That's got not the gradient. You might want the gradient on that, I don't know. And so that that's the way you control the background maps like that. And then let's see, what else do I want to show? Well, and you have other maps, current maps. I could look at uh, the wind map. Uh, or you could look at gusts, like uh, areas of gusts here. What do I have here? So here's a gusty area out here. Gust, whoa, no, this is all light air. Oh, I'm going backwards even. I'm going backwards. This is no gusts. These are strong gusts over here. Oh, that's gusting to 41 knots. This is gusting to three knots. Okay, remember, I'm looking down here to see these. Likewise, if I want to look at pressure, I have to go here, isobars, show the isobars. Now, these are blue, every one. Now, the standard, the standard that you see on the maps are four. You may sometimes want to make that smaller, but we're not reading pressure anywhere down here. You've got to know what this is, or you just... Uh, uh, you could put a label on it. Let's see, where do I put a label? Label. You see, well, I can't read that label. Well, 10, 1040. Well, that's a big pressure. Uh, okay, that's a big high pressure. So, uh, but let me turn the label off. What you could do is go back here. If you want to read the pressure digitally at different points, then you come back and background map. Uh, make the make this a uh, pressure pressure at sea level. Now you see when I have this background map, I can read the pressure down here in the in the status bar. That's an isobar of 1040. Well, what's this getting up here? 1044. That's a really high pressure. Let's see where we're looking at. Well, this is not. I'm not. I don't want to diverge into a weather class here, but that's a very high pressure. Um, okay. So uh, anyway, so that's the display. Oh, the one last thing I wanted to show this very important feature. Let me go here to the winds. Uh, let me put, um, I'm going to just, well, just, just to get back to something more kind of the wind map. And I mean a wind map here. And then, then we got the isobars and, uh, and that. Okay, so that's like a more or less a normal map. We got isobars and winds. And, uh, and the map behind it is, wi is, a, is a wind map for very low versus very high winds. Now, then, and you read that, read the winds down here in the bottom. Now, uh, but there, here's a tool I want to show you. Right click anywhere on the chart and click Meteogram, Meteogram. And then that's going to show you, of all the properties we have loaded, it starts a, it's a graph of the data. It's a graph of the data starting at the time that's up here. At this grib time, you see uh, 2258 on uh, 216. So 216, 2258. It starts there, and then there's a graph of the data. If you want to see a different time period, you change this. 
<coughs> excuse me, change this up here. You can look at the waves. Um, reflectivity. Oh, the reflectivity. Oh, there is a pressure and the reflectivity. Now, if one of those is in the way, uh, you can come down here, maybe shut off the reflectivity. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so there's a meteograms, and it's a very, very powerful tool. Winds, and this is wind and wind gusts. Okay, well, I'll stop there.